So we know that groin pain in athletes is an incredibly complex subject with lots of different diagnoses that could be going on. So in this video, we explore the Doha Agreement, where experts from all around the world came together to provide real insight into the key diagnostic signs that indicate different types of groin pain. If you're ready, let's dive in. So in 2014, the Doha Agreement was created. This is where 24 hip experts from around the world joined together at a conference to try and provide real, clear terminology for different presentations of groin pain in the sporting population. So each of these experts was advised to complete a systematic review to update the key terms and key signs that led to the diagnosis of these different conditions to formulate it in one document so that everyone could read it and understand it. So this includes things like adductor pain, iliopsoas pain, hip joint related pain or inguinal related pain. And we're going to discuss this with our 3D anatomy model coming up now. So first of all, what were the different types of groin pain that were discussed and that we're going to tell you about in this video? There are five different ones. The first is adductor related groin pain. The second is iliopsoas related groin pain. The third is inguinal related groin pain. Then we have pubic related groin pain. And finally, we have hip joint related pain. So let's start with adductor related groin pain. So here we might be thinking about an adductor tendinopathy principally. And the key different signs that the experts linked to adductor related groin pain were adductor tendinous on palpation, so in that adductor region at the pubic rami, with pain on resisted adductor testing, clearly that are going to stimulate those adductor muscles and generate adductor related groin pain. So next we have iliopsoas related groin pain. So here we might be thinking about the distal iliacus muscle or the distal iliacus tendon or the distal psoas major tendon that runs down here. Now the key things that the experts agreed on here were number one, iliopsoas tendinous that would highlight this potential diagnosis. And the group agreed that iliopsoas related groin pain was more likely if the patient had pain on resisted hip flexion and or pain on stretching of the hip flexors. Now, note the terms more likely. We know that iliopsoas related symptoms or characteristics are overdiagnosed in medicine. Just think about the number of patients who you've been told have hip flexor tightness when actually they don't. They just have some kind of anterior hip pain that a clinician will diagnose as a hip flexor tightness. Well, you may be aware of the recent trend, particularly on physiotherapy Twitter, which is it's never the hip flexor, which kind of gives you the inference that this is really overdiagnosed and that there are a number of other conditions, perhaps like we're exploring in this video, that perhaps are more likely than a genuine hip flexor problem. So next we have inguinal related groin pain. So we're talking about pain around the distal inguinal ligament and the inguinal canal here just above the pubic symphysis. So here the experts were keen to find terminology for first of all ruling out an inguinal hernia and second of all how to characterize other symptoms in the inguinal region such as an enthesopathy of the distal inguinal ligament or tears in the aponeurosis of the external oblique or perhaps even something like an ilioinguinal nerve adhesion or an ilioinguinal nerve entrapment. So different terms that they use to be able to classify this form of groin pain included pain in and around the inguinal canal region and tenderness of the inguinal canal, so just superior to the pubic ramus there. Another key characteristic of this is that there is no palpable inguinal hernia present and the group agreed that inguinal related groin pain is more likely if the pain is aggravated with resisted testing of the abdominal muscles or on coughing, sneezing, or when using a Valsalva maneuver. So next we have pubic related joint pain. So here we're talking about pain and dysfunction of the pubic symphysis itself. Now the group agreed that some of the key characteristics that would define this relation of groin pain were pain on palpation of the pubic symphysis itself and or the bone immediately adjacent to it at the very medial end of the pubis. 
Now, the experts agreed that there was no particular resisted tests that would highlight or would provoke a specific pubic-related groin pain that could be used in conjunction with the palpation. And therefore, ideally, it's the palpation itself of this region that would really highlight pubic-related groin pain to us. And the final term that we have here is hip-related groin pain. So, pain stemming from the hip joint itself. And when we think of young sporting athletes, one of the key things we're probably thinking about here is femoroacetabular impingement. So, the experts agreed that the hip joint itself should always be something that's screened for when patients have groin pain. Some of the key things that they advised on looking at, including within the history, the onset of the patient's symptoms, the nature of the patient's symptoms, and of course, the location of the patient's symptoms. And we should also be screening for mechanical signs, such as catching, locking, and clicking, or giving way, which all can be present for conditions such as FAI. The group then talked about objective examination related tests that we can do, such as passive range of movement testing and such as special tests with the Fabers test and Fadir test. The Fabers test where we combine flexion, abduction and external rotation and the Fadir test where we combine flexion, adduction and internal rotation, seeing if it reproduces the patient's pain. And we do know for FAI, for example, that the FADIR test can often be quite irritable for these patients, as well as the reproduction of pain with prone internal rotation. So certainly things to look out for with hip-related groin pain. So whilst the experts came up with definitions specifically for the five different types of groin pain that we looked at in this video, they also highlighted lots of other conditions at the hip that need to be screened for when your patient has groin pain. And as you can see, there are loads of these and really complex ones that medical professionals will often diagnose rather than physiotherapists. However, I suppose the key thing that we can take away from the Doha Agreement is that we do have clear terminology for those five different types of groin pain that will come up in athletes most commonly. And so this is really useful for our differential diagnosis. So everyone, if you've enjoyed this video, please support us by smashing that like button. And we've got other brilliant resources on our membership channel, link in the description below, with webinars such as hip differential diagnosis, if you wanted even more on this particular subject. Otherwise, we always have our Instagram account, at Clinical Physio, with loads of brilliant resources for physiotherapists too. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon, here on Clinical Physio.